Keeping the promise. Hello, my name is Clayton Baldy. I'm Sophia Meyer. I'm Garly Sobeys. I'm Free. I'm Jonathan Sandy. And we're here to talk to you about the day, about the problems that El Dorado faces with college graduates. As of right now, we have a varied evidence that shows that students should end up going to college and they should receive a college education because of the benefits they get in their workforce. As you can see, um, unemployment rates and um, college graduation rates really kind of shift on an even structure. Um, in fact, college graduates earn a lot more than um, people who don't have high school educations. Um, the El Dorado Promise was brought in to help fix this in the El Dorado community by providing every student that goes here a uh, tuition covering full, uh, a scholarship covering full tuition to El Dorado, all El Dorado High School graduates, and it can be used in Arkansas or any other accredited higher institution. First-generation students are students whose parents have, neither one of their parents have received at least a four years bachelor's degree, as opposed to continuing generation students who at least one of their parents have received a four years bachelor's degree. First-generation students consist of 21% of the college student population. The college graduation rate of first-generation students is at 11%, opposed to 55% of continuing generation students. At EHS we have a 60% um, 60% 60, 60 of El Dorado students are racial minorities and um, surveys over the past uh, 30 years or so, so have proven that um, racial minorities and people from low income are much more likely to be first generation and this is largely due to segregation. Knowing these facts, we decided to dwell into the causes of um, why racial minorities and um, poverty-stricken people have um, low education rates. And we found that it's very much um, rooted in segregation. Because during segregation, um, when schools were separated, um, white schools typically had a lot more resources and a lot more funding. And um, as you can see here, um, even now today, the effects of segregation have been carried on. This is um, a graph about how many um, white people go to white-dominated schools, and as you can see from the next one, it's um, a lot of the ones that are not white-dominated are in the South. This is um, primarily due to the um, history of American slave trade and the um, amount of agricultural resources in each state. And if you look, it's really on um, flip-flop. And it, there's a lot of either black or there's a lot of either white. And there's not a lot of in-between. So um, a lot of this is rooted in just the opportunities that are provided to different um, races because of segregation. It's not an intentional racism that's going on, we found, but it's a just a trickle-down effect. Jonathan. Um, as you can see from this graph, segregation has lent itself to a variety of different problems, um, such as poverty. And there's this idea of white flight and also um, all kinds of other different things that lend itself to really, it's a system, segregation has really led to poverty. Um, it's not something that you can really just escape. It's almost like, um, yes. Okay. So in El Dorado High School, there is a very large and thriving AP uh, system. And AP are classes that work to prepare high school students for college by giving them college coursework now. 402 of El Dorado High School students are enrolled in AP, and 53 of those students last year were nationally recognized for their uh, AP scores. These students are together, and they are going to places like Vanderbilt, Notre Dame, and Tulane, but that only accounts for 30% of El Dorado High School students. The other, and these students are likely the ones who are making it through college graduation, whereas the other 70% are the ones who are failing 
and not getting that degree even though they have the resources to. Okay, and the divide starts early for these students. In Rutter Brown Elementary, there is a 92% minority and 97% low income compared to Hugh Goodwin's 52% minority and low income. In these schools, Rutta Brown scored 77% of their students scored in the lowest percentile in the third grade literacy test compared to the 26% that scored in the same percentile at Hugh Goodwin. These schools are uh, these schools are both given the same amount of money, there, whereas their students are facing different struggles and some of them need more attention and money that they aren't getting. We saw that a lot of the problems facing our high school graduates are class specific, meaning that they pertain primarily to lower income students. And these barriers are caused by a lack of cultural capital. And cultural capital are these five attributes. And if you lack cultural capital, it's not that you don't have values or you don't have a good attitude. It's that you don't have the same comparable ones to students of higher income. And so cultural capital can also be things like experiences overseas and then things that influence your ability to interact in the classroom. And so if you have a lower cultural capital, then your lack of self-esteem isn't there when you're in a college classroom. And so you don't feel like you can contribute and you can't match up to your other fellow students. And so that hinders your process in the classroom. And coming into college, we have a lot of students who are facing low academic preparation. And so when they have low academic preparation, they have to spend more time outside of class studying just to keep up with their peers. And if you spend more time studying, it's harder to get a job. And so that goes back to the class specific barriers that when you typically, if you are lower income, you have to catch up academically, but you also have to get a job. And so you, but the job is how you survive. And so that takes priority over your academics. And so some solutions we have are in our, one is a college student focused mentoring program. And so that consists of promised graduates who go to a specific school. Um, and so we got this idea from Washita Baptist because they have a program called Welcome to Washita's World where they take freshmen and they pair them up with sophomores and juniors. And that Washita has a double the graduation rate of SAU, which is where the second most of our students go. And so we feel that introducing this mentorship program just between promised graduates would give familiar faces and a requirement to succeed or a requirement to be involved with other students. And we also talk about mentorship at the high school level. And so because our students are going in an acad some mostly acad unacademically prepared, this mentorship program would include one student aid in every classroom to aid the teachers. So it's not, it doesn't cost the school anything, but it's, it would be a privilege for the student to help and so they would learn how to teach and they would learn themselves while they're teaching and um, we looked at this at introducing this in um, the lower grades also with like Washington and Barton because at Washington there's a pretty consistent pre-AP and retention rate but at Barton the, it drops by 40 students from 7th to 8th grade and so we feel that this retention this program could help students retain their pre-AP academics in the lower levels and so then that would give them a stronger foundation in high school letting that foundation not to have to be rebuilt but then built on once they go to college. Our other uh, solution would be elementary reform by getting rid of the large divide between elementary so certain teachers aren't stretched out too thin and also in elementary schools they're Grade level retentions are super low, like 1% across the board, when there's 77% of students scoring in the lowest percentile at one school. And by holding these kids back to where they can get the um, necessary knowledge to succeed in higher levels like high school, AP, or even college, by making sure they have it there, they're more likely to succeed and be able to graduate later on. Um, our limitations is by are <laughs> by doing this, parents would lose some of their uh, control over their student, like their students' education, because if the student's forced to be held back because they didn't score, you know, parent has no control over that. 
and there's also like what is the guidelines for a student being held back because one test shouldn't decide that because if they had one bad day. Okay. Okay, an improvement in all stages of the educational journey could keep students benefiting from the summers to graduation.